Welcome everybody to our next performance of the Shelter in Place Festival. This performance is week three and it is written by Jasmina Tang. It is starring Kate McGeehy and Zoe Settle and it was directed by our very own Claire Schaefer. Enjoy everyone. Week three by Jasmina Tang. Characters, Marie, 19 years old, college freshman, bookish and shy. Liv, 17 years old, high school senior, bitter and stir crazy. Lights up on an attic bedroom. Tucked under the slant of the roof is a low bed covered in a faded quilt. There are three bookshelves neatly crammed full. More books stand in tidy towers on a massive wood desk. Historical maps of Europe, Van Gogh replicas, and other posters cover the walls. Hastily packed cardboard boxes still rest by the bed. A window shows a dark sky and silvery moonlight. Liv, with her knees pulled to her chest, sits beside it and scrolls on her phone. Marie is perched on the bed with books, writing in a journal. Marie keeps on looking at Liv. What? Don't you think you spend too much time on your phone? Don't be such a boomer. What is all that? I'm, I'm making a compilation of poems and quotes. Why? There's nothing else to do. <laughs> So you're just copying down poems and quotes like a medieval monk? Yes. You know, you could just type it up and print it out. Why would I do that? You don't have to be up here, you know. I want to. I heard mom tell you to keep me company. But I want to. Okay. Are you sad about prom? Yeah. We made like a $3,000 deposit on the venue and I don't know if they'll refund it. They should. Landlords aren't taking rent from people right now. I hope so. Have you seen my dress? Mom sent me pictures. It's pretty. I got it after three trips to the mall and other places. Mom was being really nice about it though. She knew how much it meant to me. Now I don't even know if I can return it. What do you mean? It's a 30 day policy. They'll probably make an exception. Yeah. Liv gets up and inspects some of the boxes. She pulls out a coil of fairy lights. Whose are these? Oh, my roommate gave me those before we all left. The vegan? Yes. Why? You're going to roll your eyes. No, I won't. Yes. Just tell me. She's one of those artsy people, okay? So she's super into symbolism and philosophy. Oh my god. See? Oh, all right, sorry, keep going. She told me it's just to like, remind me there's a light, even in these dark times or something like that. Okay, but she didn't have to give you fairy lights. She definitely could have just said that then hugged you goodbye. I thought it was sweet. Do you want to put them up? I don't know where I plug them in. There's an outlet under your bed. How do you know that? Mom made me power vacuum your room the other day. I had to move your bed. Do you have thumbtacks? Marie gets up and goes to the desk, opens a drawer, and takes out a former mince tin. She hands it to Liv. Where do you want it to go? 
This wall. Marie moves stacks of books down and other items so Liv can get up on the desk. Are you sad? About what? Your first year of college ending early. Seniors have more reason to be sad than I do. You can still be sad. Marie keeps punching in tax. Why do you do that? Am I doing this wrong? No, I mean the, the silence. I'm like trying to have a conversation with you, Marie. I can't really have a conversation with you if it's just me talking. What do you want me to talk about? I don't know, whatever you want. I don't wanna bore you. You won't. Talk to me about your classes. You want to hear about German literature of the early 20th century? That's a class. It's my favorite one. How is that related to anthropology? It's one of my electives. <sighs> You're such a weirdo. <laughs> but actually, it means so much to me. I, I mean, I never thought German men from a century ago would speak to me, but they really do. And I know it sounds ridiculous, but their writing is kind of getting me through this. Well, that's good. They continue working. Mom and dad are going absolutely crazy. Since I got here, all they've been watching is the news. They're trying to stay informed, but it's just making them more paranoid. When was the last time you left the house? Technically, I left the house when I did yoga in the backyard this morning. The grounds of the house. Three weeks ago, I guess, when I walked to school. They finish hanging the lights. Marie squishes her arm between the bed and the wall to plug them in. They light up. <gasps> it's so pretty. <laughs> I'll send her a picture to thank her. Marie takes a moment to snap a pic. Liv goes back to sitting by the window. When Marie is done, she joins her. They fit perfectly in the window seat. It was warm today. Open the window. Liv opens the latch and winds a handle. The pane slowly creaks outwards. I'm getting tired of home cooked food. I don't mind it, but I was also eating dining hall food, so. <laughs> They watch the cars pass by. Marie? Yeah? Can I tell you something? What is it? Promise not to judge. Sure. Don't tell mom and dad, but I think I want to take a gap year. What? I've just... I just don't know if I'm ready for another four years of school, you know? I'm so burnt out and maybe a break would be good. Where did this come from? I've been thinking a lot. I mean, there's really nothing else to do. Liv, you're not telling me the whole truth. <laughs> I heard back from my last school today. I didn't get in. I've only gotten into two out of 10. What's wrong with that? It's embarrassing. Why? What do you mean why? That's like one fifth. Better than zero fifths? <sighs> that is such a low bar. <laughs> okay, fine. But don't take a gap year just so you can run away from your embarrassment. I'm not. I commit to one of the two, defer, go away, and then come back. You're still running. I just don't really see the point, Marie, of going to college right now. What are you talking about? With all this going on. 
live. This isn't forever. It'll be over in a few months. No, I know that. It's just, it's made me realize how irrelevant everything is and how short our lives are. And I just think that I should do some soul searching, you know, like find myself and figure out what I really want before I start college. Lots of people have no idea what they're doing when they get to college. It's why freshman year is mostly gen ed stuff. You know what I mean. I do. I really do. But you shouldn't make big decisions like this when we're having an international nervous breakdown. I haven't made a decision yet. I'm still thinking. You think I shouldn't do it? I think you shouldn't be ashamed of where it accepts you and where it rejects you. I firmly believe the universe has a plan. The plan may not make sense right now, but it will. Do you think the universe is punishing us? As in you and I, or as in humanity humanity i don't think so i think this is just being alive at an inopportune time every time i go on my phone all i see are rising numbers and self-isolation infographics and suffering i've stopped going on my phone i can't stop i guess that's why mom and dad watch the news so much they can't stop looking. What do you think the universe is hypothetically punishing us for? I don't know. Global warming, xenophobia, capitalism. <laughs> <laughs> Better not say that around mom. She'll be raging again about how our generation's been brainwashed into socialism. <laughs> Why don't you look into poetry? It might get you off your phone. I don't really like poetry. Or maybe I just don't like how they teach it in school. Do you want me to read some stuff to you? They're not poems, but close. Sure. Um, you know Kafka, right? Franz Kafka? The bug man? He was so much more than the bug man. Okay, anyways, I have a bunch of my favorite quotes from him. Okay, so, um, well. Just pick one, Marie. Okay. <clears throat> the tremendous world I have inside my head, but how to free myself and free it without being torn to pieces. Jesus. And a thousand times rather be torn to pieces than retain it in me or bury it. That indeed is why I am here. That is quite clear to me. Are they all like that? You don't get it? I do, it's just really depressing. Not necessarily, it's just honest. Faint notes of a piano float in through the window. These ones are lighter. Start with what is right rather than what is acceptable. Anyone who keeps the ability to see beauty never grows old. The meaning? Wait, shh. What? Listen. They both go still. The piano is playing Moonlight, Moonlight Sonata. Where do you think it's coming from? from across the street. Oh, I wish we had balconies like they do in Italy. I think this is still nice. The meaning of life is it stops. That's a lighter one. I think it's beautiful. What is this? The song? 
Yeah. Moonlight Sonata. You remember it, right? Mom had that classical CD she used to put on when we went to bed. Back when we were still sharing that one. That was like kindergarten. <laughs> it was like a century ago. Yeah. Who would have guessed this is where we'd be now? I feel so scared all the time. I know I'm not the only one, but sometimes I just feel like when I'm in my room at night or I'm on my phone downstairs, I feel like I'm the only person alive. And I know that's not true because I'm in a house with three other people and I'm so fortunate for that. I don't even know how I'd handle this if I was on my own in some apartment somewhere. And it makes me want to cry because there are people alone in some apartment somewhere. And I just, I mean, like, what are we supposed to do? Just sit for three months? That's the only way we can beat this thing. I know that, but I, I feel helpless. And I feel so selfish for trying to figure out my future when there are people dying and no one knows. No one knows when this ends or what'll happen or. I think planning is good because planning requires a future and you will have one. We all will. The piano starts playing Claire de Lune. This is making me sleepy. It's nine o'clock. Time isn't real right now. My sleep schedule is so out of whack. I did hear somebody going down the stairs at an ungodly hour. 2 a.m. That was you? Yeah, I was hungry. Of course. <laughs> you know, um, right before you got here was the day they took us out of school, back when it was just for a month. I didn't know. An hour before they announced it, I literally just got rejected from my dream school. A lot of people were happy about the break because they thought it was like just another vacation, but I was super worried. I, I mean, I didn't think it would affect my life that much and now my future was so unclear. I mean, I spent half my last day of high school crying. And that's when I started thinking about a gap year because I, I just didn't know what was what I was supposed to do. And when I got home, mom was in hysterics and dad was trying to set up a grocery delivery service. And I just felt so overwhelmed. So I came up here to your room. I just like laid in your bed and cried because I wanted you here to tell me what to do. Really? I mean, I was just being dramatic because I knew you were about to come, and home, come home and all, but you know, it was just distressing. It was. It's okay now. I'm home. We're all safe. I know. You want me to keep reading? Yeah. Let everything happen to you. Beauty and terror, just keep going. No feeling is final. Is that from the Bugman too? No, it's not from Kafka. It's from Rilke. Rilke? Rainer Maria Rilke. He's not as well known, unfortunately. I'm pretty sure that's from a movie. No, it's not. It's from Rilke. I wasn't saying it's not. I, I just mean that the quote's been used in a movie. Oh. Maybe. The song comes to an end. Thank you! I'm sorry your senior year got cut short and that you didn't get into the schools you wanted to. It's okay. The universe has a plan, right? And no feeling is final. No feeling is final. They go back to staring out the window. Lights fade down. End of play. 
Well done to our actors and our director. Jasmina, if you want to come and join me on the chat and our audience, if you have any questions, comments about the work, we would love to hear them. Just post them on this live stream. Jasmina, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Where are you sheltering in place? I'm sheltering in place in um, Northern Virginia with my family. So I am very fortunate to have other people in the house with me. Oh, that's good. Kind of similar to Marie and Liv in the play. That's awesome. Well, let's get started. What was the inspiration for this piece? Um, well, to be honest, um, I have a friend who, is, who also has a younger sister and just hearing her talk about the chaos that their house has ensued um into a little bit and just how um how the two of them have been kind of like bonding and spending time with each other yeah. um inspired me i was also inspired a little bit by how my own younger brother and i have been interacting with each other during this time um just because i feel like before this we didn't really spend that much time together and now that we're kind of forced to um it's been nice because i feel like i'm getting to know him more which is always good um, yeah, and also just not, this isn't a very original thing, but um, the music. I've been listening to a lot of classical music, and I think um, Claire de Lune is what had this play pop into my mind, and then I just wrote it out, and here we are. That is beautiful. It's so interesting that music can often inspire different forms of creativity, and I love that it inspired you to write this piece. Um, we have one comment from Neil Lerner. He says, very real conversation between these two sisters. I am also interested about the development of the sister relationship. You talk a little bit that you're getting to know your brother in a different way and y'all are kind of talking to each other in a different way in this new time. Talk a little bit about that of the development with Marie and Liv. Yeah, so... Um... I did write Marie and Liv pretty close in age um, because one of them's a senior and the other one is a freshman in college. So that's only a little bit over a year, basically. Um, and I thought that it would be interesting to have that um, inherent dynamic set up because I feel like people often assume that when you're separated by only a brief span of time, you're pretty close to each other. But in their case, it's quite the opposite. Um, and I tried to make that obvious in subtle ways. Um, I don't know if people caught this part specifically, but when Liv asks Marie about seeing her prom dress, Marie says that it was their mother who sent the photos to her and it wasn't Liv. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that kind of already establishes that if these sisters aren't really texting with each other that often and they won't like update each other on big things like buying your senior prom dress, um, it kind of speaks volumes just about what they're like, um, like sister wise. And yeah, but I, I thought that I really like the idea of this forced bonding happening and I wanted to see how I could develop that in just like a few pages um, because obviously you could write a whole book on how dynamics are changing in um, when you're when everyone's been rushed into a house and they have to stay there for so long under such strange circumstances. Um, yeah, but I, I really wanted to show that it's not like they've suddenly become best friends by the end of this, but they're getting there and they're starting to listen to each other more and understand each other a little bit better. So it's not necessarily like a neatly tied up conclusion, but it's getting there. Yeah, um, I thought that it was very interesting that those two sisters and that you kind of delved into a little bit about their relationship just with the text message, and I didn't catch that, so thank you for adding that, um, that there was a fear of judgment from both of them, the fear of judgment from Liv if Marie told their parents about the gap year, or Marie from Liv about her anthropology nerdiness and the symbolism of her roommate, like, don't judge me. Um, and we do have some comments from the audience for you. Benjamin Bratcher says, I enjoyed the dynamic between the two sisters. It's interesting getting to listen in on such a deep and personal conversation, great writing and performances. Um, but yeah, talk a little bit about that fear of judgment from the two of them. Yeah, um, once again, I'm pulling a lot from my own personal experience and the experiences of all my friends who have younger and older siblings. 
I feel like when you're with friends, for the most part, if you guys are pretty close, judgment or just any chance of judgment kind of fades away pretty quickly once you've become really close. Um, I feel like I can do the most embarrassing, wacky things in front of my friends and they'll just find it endearing. So it's, it's never <laughs> an issue with them. Um, but I feel like with my brother, um, he, he seems to make it his personal duty in life to find a way to um, criticize me for everything I do. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. I think it's super normal for siblings to always be judging each other and kind of jabbing at each other and making remarks and things. And I don't see anything wrong with that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think because Liv and Marie are so different and my brother and I are so different, um, it can be hard sometimes to have that deep bond and establish a closer relationship if both of you or one of you is so afraid of being judged or misunderstood by the other person. And I think I, in week three, I wanted to show that if you make the effort to get over that initial bout of awkwardness and forced conversation, good things can happen. And I really wanted to show that, especially in the end when um, Liv manages to pair it back, Rilke's qu um, quote to her sister, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have some great questions. Um, I have from Lori Ackerman. She says, excellent play. The conversations are real and very sister-like. Which character do you connect with more? Um, this might sound a little weird, but personally, when I was writing it, I saw Liv and Marie as the two sides of myself in my own head. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like more on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm more like Marie, which I thought was kind of funny because when I saw Marie in the live stream, we are both wearing white shirts and cardigans. And I thought that was <laughs> funny. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like I had this, I suppose like my inner consciousness, I guess, um, represented in these two sisters. And yes, but I think I'd say on more of a day-to-day -day basis, it's Marie. Yeah, we have some more comments. Um, I like the, from Jennifer Steele, sorry. I like the vulnerability of the younger sister sharing how she really deep down needed the other one and dare we say missed her more than she admit. Um, Amelia Meyer says, very good depiction of this type of sibling relationship. What do you envision happening to the sisters in the future? Will they stay closer after this? I hope that they will stay closer after this. Um, I personally think that there is always a natural connection that forms between two people when they've endured something um, serious or traumatic together, um, especially when you're forced to be in such close proximity for a long period of time. And like Marie said, there's like an international nervous breakdown happening. I think the memories that you make with the people who are around you and the things that you do with them will always be with you. Um, yeah, and I, I really do hope that everybody, I guess, who's reconnecting with siblings or family members or friends or whoever does manage to maintain those connections after this, because this has been a big wake up. How much is out of our control and we should take advantage of what is in control and that's our relationship with other people. Yeah, well, our final question, uh, do you have any questions for the audience that they would like to take from this piece? Um, well, I think as a writer, obviously, I, I guess I just like to know if people have any thoughts on the rhythm of the dialogue, it, how realistic they felt the play itself was, and if they felt the characters were sufficiently fleshed out in the um, page number I was provided, I suppose. The play itself was about 17 pages, I think. Um, but obviously when you have a shorter play, it can be hard to establish really well-rounded characters. So I guess I just like to know if people felt that that was done. I love that. Well, thank you so much for submitting to our play festival. Thank of course, you. For thank you so here. much for having me. This has been wonderful. Oh, it's been wonderful talking with you. We hope to see more work from you again soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. All right, audience, we will see you in just a second back here with a Q&A with Neil Lerner. Our uh, Get Me Home video is going 
actually, it just dropped at 530. So go to our page, watch that video, enjoy an original musical, and then come back here and we will have a Q&A with Neil Lerner. Bye everyone.